Well, you mentioned it there in the last mm. half hour or so. We've had the latest inflation figures, which show a price rise of 7% in the 12 months to March 2022. Nina is at a market in Birmingham and can tell us more. Morning, Nina. Yes, morning, Sally. You know, those prices might be shocking, but the stock here, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the colour, absolutely beautiful. We've got uh, guava here from Egypt. We've got beautiful herbs and spices that have come all the way from Cyprus. And these cherries, where are they from? Patagonia. There you go. Uh, this is Mr Mahmood, who I just bumped into, who's been running his own supermarket for 25 years. When I said to you, how are prices, what did you say? You put your head in your hands, didn't you? Yeah, his prices is too much at the moment. i am lost 20 years in this trade. And in my life, this is prices, double, more than double prices. More than double. <clears throat> yeah, which fruit is going to on season, that is double price, that's ailing one. Oh, good luck, Mr Mahmood, because you were telling me that your shop's a big part of your community. I'll give a message to Boris Johnson, do it something. I think if this going on regular basis, that corner shop is going to close down. You think it will put yeah. corner shops under too much pressure? Thank you, Mr Mahmood. You. Yeah, a start warning from him, because we learned this morning, didn't we, that inflation has hit... 7%, as John was saying just earlier to Grant Shapps, that's higher than was predicted. The thoughts is that it would be at 6.7%. Now, 7% takes it all the way to a 30-year high. We haven't seen prices like this since the early 90s. Why is it happening? Well, those eye-watering prices of petrol at the pump back in March, you saw it and you heard it there from Grant Shapps partly because of the stop start of the global economy, putting pressure on energy prices, but also the war in Ukraine. You know, March was the first month that took in the impact of that. And we brought the news to you yesterday that your wages are nowhere near keeping pace with inflation. On average, your wages are going up by approximately 4% although that is a lot lower if you work in the public sector. So implications then for businesses like Mr Mahmood's, for wholesalers, uh, but also for you at home, it's massive. Let's speak to Florence, who works for the Food Foundation. Morning to you. Good morning. What are businesses saying to you and what are families saying to you about these increases in food costs? Well, I think it's important to remember that this is not just an economic crisis, it's a health crisis. Uh, so these fluctuations have a massive impact on the millions of businesses that are part of our, our wider food system. But really, they, the cost of food plays out in the, in the health of the population, in, uh, for millions of adults, millions of children, um, who are forced not only to sometimes go without, but are forced to make unhealthy decisions for their families to just keep their bellies full. Unhealthy calories are three times cheaper than healthy calories. Um, and of course, it's incredibly stressful for families and for people. And um, stress is a massive factor in the development of many illnesses and diseases. So, you know, what we're going to see is, is this playing out in the, in the long term. Um, the government in their levelling up agenda talks about decreasing health disparities. But what we're seeing is the complete opposite happening. So what we really need um, is, is, is serious action from the government. Um, otherwise, we're going to see these health impacts playing out for, um, you know, in our children as they grow up and adults as they grow old. If you could sit down with the Prime Minister. So, you know, Mr Mahmood said he wants the Prime Minister to come and see how hard it is for him to run his business. What would you say to him? What needs to happen now and what needs to happen in the long term to reframe our relationship with healthy food? Well, in the short term, there are a couple of clear interventions, policies that the government could bring in. For example, uh, benchmarking benefits against inflation. Inflation is sitting at 7%. Benefits have only gone up by 3.1%. Um, we also could look at expanding the free school meal scheme and the healthy start vouchers for families. We really can't underestimate the importance of childhood nutrition to give kids, you know, the literal building blocks they need to be healthy, happy humans. Um, in the long term, there's a, a suite of things that um, our, our government need to do. Um, you know, we've gone from shock to shock for our food system, from um, Brexit, the pandemic, um, now the conflict in Ukraine. And those shocks are going to continue to come. We're going to see with, uh, with uh, climate change, um, in ongoing uh, weather events, um, and our food system's actually contributing to, the, to, to climate change. So what we need the government to do is to deliver an ambitious, strategy, uh, a food bill in response to the national food strategy with both short-term and long-term actions that are going to create a resilient food system okay. and also one that is uh, not contributing to those structures. All right. Thank you, Florence. Thank you Lots of different thoughts there. But Grant Shapps was saying earlier to John, putting a lot on the conflict in Ukraine and saying that's where the government focus needs to be. Others would argue differently. Tesco had their results out this morning. Uh, their profits are at £2.8 million. They say they're doing everything they can to reduce prices because they 
they recognise uh, that consumers are struggling, but some would argue it's up to them to lead the way and bring down prices. Bank of England saying inflation will go higher than 8% in the coming months. So we do need to recognise that this is here for the long term. Interest rates, aren't they? Um, Nina, thanks so much.